Hello, what's up, you two photographer Ronix with an tutorial and this tutorial. I want to show you what I usually do to spice up images after doing skin retouching using frequency suppression. So I want to show you the simple steps I tend to do when it comes to Photoshop and when I'm done doing skin retouching to make the images better and stand out at the end of the process. So what I do after doing skin retouching is simply creating a stamp visible layer. So a stamp visible layer is basically a copy layer of everything we have done before and it's going to be like a screenshot of the adjustments below it. So in order to create that layer, simply press Shift, Alternate, Control E if at all using Windows. Then if at all using Mac, you can use Shift, Option, Command E on the keyboard to create that layer. So after creating it, the next thing I tend to do is simply coming to Filter and coming to the camera of filter. Remember, the very first thing I tend to target is to add contrast to the skin tone. So now to add contrast, I simply first of all come down to my color mixer adjustment option in the camera roll filter and I simply come to the oranges and I simply darken the oranges. And you can see that adds up contrast to the skin tone. And after that, I simply come and add a tiny bit of contrast to the image to around five is okay for this image and you can see what that does to the image and it makes the skin look a little bit richer then i open the image back to photoshop and the next thing i tend to do regarding skin tones is simply coming to create a black and white adjustment layer and changing the blend mode to multiply and i come and i reduce the opacity so this tends to make the image look richer regarding skin tone then the next thing after doing that what I tend to do, I just come down here and I simply come and create a selective color adjustment layer. So this layer tends to enhance the darks or the blacks by coming to the black channel and I simply take up the black slider up. So if at all the blacks or the darks in the image are looking a little bit different, so you have to play around with the cyan slider. So if at all they are a little bit reddish, the blacks or the shadows simply play around with these sliders to look for what works best for you so i simply play around with this to get a better black color and add the richness in the black color so after i have done all that the next thing i tend to do is simply coming down here and i come and I create a curves adjustment layer so usually you have seen my images they tend to have that nice glow on the skin so what i do i come i create a curves adjustment layer then i simply click and drag until the image is brightening up a little bit then to refine this effect to affect the highlights better i double click to open up the blend if or layer style dialog box right here then i simply left click and hold down and i drag the effect from affecting the bright the darkest area so that it can only affect the lightest areas of the image so this doesn't look okay so in order to refine this i simply press the alternate key on the keyboard or you can press the option key and you simply left click on this slider and split it towards the right hand side so this adds dimension or shape to the image so you can see a quick before and after but sometimes it's going to affect the outfit or even the surrounding so i tend to click on the white layer mask and simply press ctrl i then for Mac, it is Command I on the keyboard to invert that, and I simply get the brush tool. So with the brush tool selected, I make sure I have black and red by use, by clicking on these two tiny boxes. So make sure white is a foreground color. Remember in Photoshop, white reveals and black hides. So with that done, the mode is normal percent flat hundred percent, and the brush is a soft round brush with hardness at zero. So what I do, I simply use the brush and paint. On only the areas I feel should be affected by this glow or shine so this is basically what I tend to do so you can paint on the overall skin if at all you want the whole skin to have that nice and beautiful glow and this is the before after for just the glow then finally what I do I do some little bit of eye whitening so I simply come to adjustments and simply select hue and saturation and I make sure I come to master and simply take down the saturation around negative 71 and i invert the effect from affecting the overall image by pressing ctrl i on the keyboard and still with the brush tool selected i'll simply zoom into the eyes just like that and get 
a relatively small brush with white as a foreground color and I'll simply paint into the white area of the eye to apply the whitening effect in the eyes of my subjects or my model so I'll just simply paint in the white area to whiten and this makes the image even better and look real and beautiful so if I told you make a mistake switch the brush back to black with the a black brush you can erase the effect from the areas that you didn't want to affect so right now this is what i have been able to achieve and by the way if at all the glow is a little bit too much you can come to pass and simply reduce on the glow effect so right now this is what i have been able to achieve and let me just group these effects and i show you what we have been able to achieve by just doing these simple additions or adjustments to this image so this is the image from retouching and this is what i've been able to achieve before after before after just look at how we have been able to tra transform this image to look better and more beautiful so this is all i do after doing skin retouching on photos and later on i simply come and i save the image by coming to file export export as and i save it as a sharp image so that it doesn't change in color when i post it on social media or when I print it out. So I make sure the format is JPEG quite around 100%. Resample is by Cubic Sharper because I want Photoshop to slightly sharpen the image for me in the process of saving. Then when it comes to color space, I simply check convert sRGB and also I also embed the color profile. So after you're done doing all this, the image is going to load in this other preview window. So when it is done loading in this preview window, you can simply click export. So this is it for this video. And if I told you I've learned a thing or two from this video, I request that you hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe this channel. If at all you have been watching and you're not yet subscribed this channel, Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I see you need more amazing tools. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.